The world around us is made up of atoms. Atoms make molecules and molecules make up almost all we see around us. Students learn about this in middle school. Understanding atoms and molecules is related to the understanding of important ideas like change of state, solids, liquids and gases, physical and chemical changes and even higher concepts like compounds, mixtures and chemical formulae. But how well do children understand these concepts of atoms and molecules? When water is boiled in a closed container, it turns into steam. In figure P, Winay has drawn a magnified view of a small portion of liquid water in a closed container. Which of the following would best represent the magnified view of the same part after water turns into steam? Will the water molecule split up into oxygen and hydrogen atoms? Or will the water molecules simply move apart from each other? Will the water molecules separate and become hydrogen and oxygen gas? Or will the water molecules simply rearrange themselves? As you know, what are, uh, when water evaporates, it turns into steam and it, uh, the expansion takes place of water so that uh, oxygen and the hydrogen atoms get split up. And so as a water consists of two parts of hydrogen equals one part of water, so the ox oxygen bubbles will be a little less, the oxygen will be a little less out of hydrogen. So maybe in steam, they uh, the molecules. I mean, uh, a molecule of water separate from each other. I mean, hydrogen separate and uh, oxygen separate. This is because uh, as in the figure, in the figure P it is drawn that the hydrogen and oxygen molecules are joined together and they form a water molecule. So in figure A, what happens is after it, uh, in figure P it was in a liquid state. So all of them were together and as it was heated it changed in it changed into a gaseous state and the molecules became free from each other and they got more warm so they got separated as is the answer. I think we all are just confused about whether the atoms separate or the molecules separate. Yeah. yeah. Uh, when water evaporates uh, due to heat it evaporates it's it changes in the form of air and the mm -hmm. oxygen and hydrogen Get separated. Anybody says it looks like the first one? Okay. Why do you say it looks like the first one? Because in, uh, in the air, the oxygen and hydrogen will be different. Only in the water, they combine, I mean, water state, okay. they combine and so they form H2. But in glacier state, we can't find water there. We can't find H2, but okay. we can find H2 and O2. So you will find uh, both hydrogen and oxygen in the glacier state, but it will not be like H2O. It will yeah. not be combined. Yeah. Uh, whenever water uh, is heated, uh, whenever it forms steam, the molecules of hydrogen and oxygen, and oxygen get separated. I think you call it O2 atom, not O2 molecule, because uh, oxygen. We, yeah, it is always two because it needs one more to get stabilized. So, yeah, I guess it's not O2 molecule, I guess it's O2 atom. Because uh, an atom, as a rule, never exists as itself. It can exist independently or uh, it can also depend. Yeah, it can be both. It can not exist separately. So I need to, I want to know what atom can, can exist independently. Uh, in, uh, in chemistry, we are, we are learning that atoms do not have independent existence. And, it, uh, in, di uh, and in diagram A, it is shown that uh, atom and hydrogen atoms are existing uh, independently. 
The most common misconception heard again and again seems to be that when water is heated, the water molecule will split and the constituent hydrogen and oxygen atoms would separate. Some children seem to know that hydrogen and oxygen atoms cannot exist independently. So combining the first misconception with this piece of information which is correct, these children conclude that the correct answer is C because after they separate, they must come together in pairs to form H2 and O2. And we even heard students say that the atoms shuffle around and form a new arrangement which was the option D. However, these are not true and the correct answer is simply B that the molecules move apart and there is no kind of splitting of the molecule. This is a very basic idea that is also related to the ideas of chemical change which happens when molecules split and physical changes which happen when molecules do not split. So the changing of water into steam as we have all studied is a physical change. Now do children understand this correctly? Let's see. And what is the chemical formula of the things inside this? H2O. H2O. And this, what did you say? I'm not sure. This is, com it's separated into hydrogen and uh, oxygen. Okay. So is this a physical change or a chemical change? It's a physical change. It's a physical change. Okay. A physical change is temporary change. It can, uh, be, uh, it can be brought back again. Okay. Uh, but a chemical change is a permanent change. Okay. We cannot get the uh, original substance back. Okay, so here what we are talking about is it physical or chemical? Physical change. Okay, so will we, so what is the correct answer then? I think it is first. You think it is the first one? So H2O, H2O becomes H and O. Yes. Is that a chemical change or a physical change? Physical change. Okay. So the first one, suppose I from H2O I get H and O. Yes, is that a physical change or a chemical change? That is a physical change, sir. That is a physical change. So I have H2O and then I get H and O, it's a physical change. Why do you call it a physical change? Sir, I call it a physical change as they can combine, be combined to get H2 again, but the only thing, uh, large amount of energy is needed, sir. Okay, so what you're saying is because they can combine again, yes, sir. call it a physical change, but you're saying that it needs too much energy. Too much energy. is definitely not very clear otherwise they would have said the molecules move apart not the atoms okay. yeah what they answered all of them said hydrogen and oxygen were separated meaning they assumed that the atoms were separated like uh, now after seeing the misconception what i'll try to do is i'll mostly give them these kind of tests so that I know what is, where is the problem actually. Now I know that atoms and molecule concepts are not there. Not there at all. That's why they answered like this. Mm -hmm. They might have read so many things after that. Mm -hmm. Okay, they can talk for five, ten, five pages on atoms and molecules. But the basic difference, they don't know. Do you think that B is a molecule? Or is it not a molecule? No, it's an, it's an atom. All atoms are separated. Okay. It was a molecule before, but now it got separated. And you think that B represents steam? Atoms of steam. Atoms of steam. Do you think, think steam has a molecule? Mm, no. No, because they are in a gaseous state, so the atoms will be away. Yeah, okay. They will be away, so therefore it won't have a molecule. But solids do have, and liquids, like, like they are exception. Atoms of steam. Steam does not have molecules. As we can see, there are a number of areas in which there seem to be misconceptions, even confusion in the children's mind. In fact, we found while doing this, these interviews with children across schools across the country, 
In this particular question, we found that there were not many children who were able to completely answer the question correctly. Even in cases where children would give the correct answer, which was B, option B, we found that the explanations were often incorrect or partially incorrect. A common misconception seemed to be that B is the answer because in B, the molecules are shown slightly further apart, loosely packed, as the children would say. So whatever was loosely packed was the answer because we were asking for the, the, the structure of steam, which is a gas. Let's now look at how we could try and what we can try and do so that children actually understand these concepts well. As a teacher, we can use uh, colored balls of different sizes to represent the different atoms. Let's take red for oxygen, let's take blue for hydrogen, let's take pink for chlorine, and let's take uh, green for sodium. Now, through this, we can show oxygen gas. When two atoms of oxygen combine, you have oxygen gas. Similarly, you have hydrogen gas. Water forms, as we know, when two atoms of hydrogen combine with one atom of oxygen. Salt, common salt, comes from sodium and chlorine. And you can have a mixture, which is a solution of common salt in water. Isn't it easy to teach all these things using the simple concept of balls which represent atoms and molecules which are made of different atoms which are combined with each other? These can be given as exercises and interesting questions can be asked to check whether children are, are understanding. For example, try asking children what is the chemical formula of steam. Stumped? Children do get confused. But if they understand these concepts, they know that steam is nothing but another form of water. And the molecules in steam are exactly the same as the molecules of water. And by looking at the molecule, we know that the answer is H2O, exactly the same as the formula of water. By doing these things, we can ensure that no child crosses these stages without understanding the concepts of atoms and molecules completely and really well. over the last uh, few minutes was that students have certain mental models, ways of thinking about the world, certain ideas and clearly these ideas are uh, not uh, what we intended to pass on to them as teachers or interested adults. These are ideas children have uh, formed by actively trying to make sense of what they are seeing around them or what has been taught. Uh, what is uh, however important to understand here is that uh, the instinctual reaction of adults or teachers when they see uh, these kind of responses is to say that, let me explain this again, let me explain this more clearly, uh, two times, if not thrice. Uh, this is bound to fail. So what we find is that it's extremely important for a teacher to listen first, find out what is already on the child's mind, to then help the child to review the correctness of this idea, weigh it against other ways of thinking, other mental models to really be able to say that no, this didn't work and this is a better way of looking at things. And our hope is that teachers start doing this based on seeing films like this. You have seen just one concept but there are several such ideas across class levels, across topics and this is our hope that teachers will become active listeners and we will have a chance to teach our children better. <laughs>